And I just, um, oh, and I'm Paul. I'm a librarian at the Coos Bay Public Library. I'm here with my coworker, Joshua, and um, Jamar Ruff, the outreach coordinator from the Coos Head Hello. Food Co-op. And we're just going to turn it right over to him. It's all yours, Jamar. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, thank y'all for joining us for Community Kitchen with the Co-op. And tonight we are making our Coos Head Pumpkin Curry. So whenever it starts getting cold outside and the rain starts coming, it is really hard for me not to, to like come into work and, you know, and not want to like stay at home and make soup. <laughs> you know? But I figured this would be the perfect um, thing to kind of like warm up our weekday on a Thursday. And it's pretty simple, which I love, especially like it's getting close to the weekend. I just want to come home and I just want to cook and I want it to be really simple, but really delicious as well. And this is what this recipe offers. So um, let's start with the quinoa. Because as the quinoa is cooking, oh, and hi, Jamie. Yes. <laughs> hello, hello. Jamie. <laughs> well, both Jamie's. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> So we're gonna start with the quinoa. Um, the quinoa, while the quinoa is cooking, we're gonna be prepping and sauteing our veggies to go to actually make the curry. The quinoa is gonna take a total of 30 minutes. Well, no, 20, yeah, 30 minutes because you cook for 20 and then you stand for 10. So while that is cooking, we're gonna be um, preparing our mushrooms, the onions, the bell peppers, the chickpeas. I'm so excited about this, especially because our power just went out and I was like, I gotta cook, <laughs> you know? I was like, this cannot happen. Back in action. Hey, we'll troubleshoot and we'll just bring it right to the stove, okay? <laughs> That's what we'll do. Um, so first, I have, well, I'm cooking a little bit more quinoa than y'all will be, but the recipe calls for um, a cup of quinoa. Yeah, a cup of tri color quinoa. And it's always, when you're cooking quinoa, it's always gonna be a one to two. So one, if I'm using one cup, I'm gonna use two cups of liquid. And I'm using veggie stock because I feel like everything is much better with veggie stock. Um, <laughs> if you know me, you know, it's like, keep your, keep your sides, keep your, keep your kitchen scraps and um, make your own veggie stock at home. I love doing that. That way I can control what it is. And you can also control the sodium level as well when you build your own um, veggie stock. So Jamar, I'm gonna cut you off real quick. I forgot to say, cause there's a lot of new people here tonight. Um, feel free to unmute and uh, ask questions if need be, or put them in the chat and we'll feed them to Jamar. So don't, don't hesitate to ask questions as Jamar's cooking. Sorry yes. Jamar. Hey, no, 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 that was perfect. And also this is a No Chef Left Behind Kitchen <laughs> class. Um, we will stay, we all, the goal is we all finish at the same time. And if there's someone that falls behind, we kind of pause and we make sure that they are able to catch up with the class, okay? So first, quinoa. I've already rinsed my quinoa and you wanna make sure that before, whenever you're cooking quinoa, you wanna rinse it so that way it um, decreases the bitterness of it. But then also a part of cooking quinoa is you wanna toast it a little bit. Now, last time we cooked quinoa, someone toasted it in the oven. And so you don't really have to do that. <laughs> but um, here's what we're gonna do. So in our pot, first rinse, so rinse the quinoa um, so that way we decrease the bitterness. And then in our pot, we're going to start with um, a little olive oil in the bottom of the pan. And then for our onion, our red onion, we're going to saute half. We're going to cut half of it. So how I how I chopped my onions is I did like a, a I didn't do a rough chop, but I did like a little a dice. And what I'm going to do is show y'all how I cut my onions because everybody cuts an onion differently. What I found. <laughs> so um, if you want to go above. Yeah. Huh. Wait a while. <laughs> there we go. Okay, okay. So <laughs> Josh looks like he just got a little excited. <laughs> Hi, Karina. Question? You Can have you muted, off? Karina. Unmute. Yeah. I wanted to say hi. I wanted to come in and, and um, let you know that I can't stay. I'm not feeling 100% tonight. So I was all geared up and ready to cook with you, and uh, 
I don't know. I don't feel sick. I just feel like very low energy tonight. So, but I did want to at least come in and acknowledge that I'd signed up and I just uh, wanted you to have a great evening and um, hopefully next, next month will be before Thanksgiving. Yes, yeah. we're going to do it the week before. Thanks for bringing that up, Karina. We're going to do the um, Thursday before. Okay. And we have a surprise guest. Yes, and we're going to have a surprise guest. Okay. Surprise chef, right? Yeah, it's surprise chef, not a guest. Surprise yeah. chef. Well, thanks for joining us, Karina, and I'm sorry you don't feel well. I hope you feel better. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. and I didn't want to just not show up. I wanted to at least come on and say hi to everybody and so have a great evening and, hey, and take I'll, it easy. I'll cook it tomorrow, Jama. Yeah, and let me know if you need anything. We can definitely run through the recipe over the phone. Yeah. I'm good. But thank yeah, you. Great seeing you, Karina. Bye. Good evening, everybody. Bye bye. Okay. Got it? You want to vote? Yes. Okay, yes. okay. Right. okay so we're gonna start cooking the onion. And I'm going to get my pan preheated already. So when I cut my onion, like as you can see, I cut it in half and it's like this. And so what I do is I typically, I will cut and then it falls like that. And then I'll cut again. And what I found is a simple way, especially when you're cooking with kids, a simple way so that way they don't have to dice onions is just start cutting at an angle. And I'm doing half the onions for my quinoa. So the quinoa, so in the pot of the quinoa, it's gonna be olive oil. We're gonna have some red onions. And then as those start toasting, then we're gonna pour the quinoa over that. And then the, we're gonna let the quinoa toast a little bit before adding our veggie stock to it. And Jamar, what temp do you have your burner at? Um, I always have my burner. I always have my burner a little high, but let's put it on a medium heat. Because what medium you're trying to do is you want to saute it. You don't want to burn the quinoa. Definitely. Okay. So I'm adding some olive oil and I'm just putting enough, I would say maybe a tablespoon and a half, just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. And then I'm going to put my onions over in it. And I did not use the whole onion, I did a half the onion. And if anyone has any questions, please feel free to unmute. Okay. Or put them in chat and we'll feed them to Jamar. I was really excited because this week has been a little busy, but once I like got in the kitchen and I think I was listening to some Reba, I'm always listening to Reba. <laughs> I said that so casually, like, oh, this is a one-time thing. Now I'm always listening to Reba. <laughs> Reba Station on Pandora is pretty awesome. And I had my headphones in and I was prepping and I was getting everything together. And I was just like, okay, I'm excited. This is what I'm doing. And if it's not Reba, it's Aretha, right? Yes, it's Aretha. <laughs> but I have been venturing out. You know? Good. <laughs> I have been venturing out, but I do call it my um, ride in my diva train. <laughs> so it's like, oh. <laughs> And there's a lot of divas out there, just <laughs> FYI. <laughs> there's a few. There, there is a few, there is a few. So I have my onion sauteing, which I'm going to add a little bit more because I didn't even get prepped on not using garlic this time. <laughs> Nobody, no one even caught that. <laughs> What, you put garlic in it? I know, I didn't put garlic in it. And it's, and it's all green leaf? I don't think Tara's here tonight to give you a hard time. Right, right. I Normally caught that there's no garlic. <laughs> I caught that. Stacy caught it. Okay, right. It's like, you know, that's my go-to. And by the way, for all my gardeners out there, I just want to say, 
If you haven't gotten your garlic in the ground, you might want to go ahead and start doing that. <laughs> so I'm sauteing my onion. And what we're doing is we're looking for the onions to get a little bit of translucent. They start to turn a light pink. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of salt and pepper over it. And I'm doing like a pinch of salt and a pinch of pepper, maybe a little bit more. <laughs> and Jamar, Bert wants to know what's your favorite fall soup or stew? Oh, so, okay. I will say like soon as the rain came, it was on a Sunday and I made like a chicken white bean soup, no noodles, just vegetables. And I like to keep it really simple. Like I am a soup novice. So I really love just simple, straight to the point. And I also made like some croutons. So sometimes I'll make like cornbread, but I make croutons out of um, farmstead bread, cow them out of olives wow. um, bread. Yeah. And I like put the, yeah, so I don't know. Ah, but I also, yeah, I don't know. That is really hard. You can't ask me these questions. <laughs> well, that was perfect because white beans are Bert's favorite. Okay, white bean. It was a white bean chicken soup. It had celery, potatoes. Um, I did even did some dried, I crushed up some dried red peppers and put it in there just so I can have a little heat. A little kick. Um, but yeah, I kept it, I kept it a little simple. Use some sage, thyme, um, Himalayan. You know, we can go on and on and on. But there is a point what I found in making soup. There is a point to where you add it too much. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just too much, but too many vegetables. Too, it can be, yeah. So, and how do I know that? Because there's been times where I've added too much. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely soup time. Yeah. Um, and Bert, if you have any recipes or any suggestions on some soup, I'm always looking to dive into a new recipe. So, my onions are looking really good. Nice. Are you able to see that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, you steamed up the camera. That's funny. Yeah, I know. I know. It's going away. Right. <laughs> it's just like magic. <laughs> and so, some, some folks um, came into the store, and they were looking at the recipe, and they were like, Jamar, I won't be able to make it, but... What if, because I, I I use pumpkin puree, which is, pumpkin puree is always like a mix of pumpkins and squashes, but I love the Farmer's Market brand, um, and it was nice and easy. I tried a, a, a different, tried some different <laughs> pump, canned pumpkin, but this one is my favorite because it's simple and it absorbs flavor really, really well. So the brand's Farmer's Market? Yes. Hey, Paul, can I ask a question real quick? Go for it, Cheyenne. Hey, guys. Hey, Jamar. Hello. Um, so on that note for the pumpkin puree, how, so how big is the can that you use? Is it a 15-ounce can? No, I use the 15-ounce can. OK. And if Good you question. measure it, it may be almost like over a cup. Yeah. Perfect. That looks about right, yeah. And um, you, do you want to tell the audience of what 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 you're using as your puree? Yeah, I just got a sugar pumpkin from the farmer's market yesterday, and I really like it. It's like a pumpkin puree. 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 I'm going to go ahead and move in and start adding my quinoa. And I'm going to let the quinoa sit in here for a little bit. The goal is to toast the quinoa. And you'll hear it. I have recently washed it and all of that stuff. So it's like, Jamar, you just threw me in a hot pan. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's gigantic um what is it quinoa 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 really it, it seems big 
Well, that's because once it gets wet, quinoa, like, get, you know, it goes all together and all of this stuff. But yeah, it looks really big, but it's not. Okay. Let's Thank see you. Yeah. And you're using a lot. Yeah, I am. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just clumping a little. This is my second time eating quinoa this week. I did make quinoa <laughs> instead of fried rice the other night. So. Jamar, Bird asked, how long soaking the quinoa? So you just, you don't have to soak the quinoa. So what you want to do is just rinse the quinoa. Um, so I rinsed it a couple of times. It just decreases the bitterness. So yeah, it, it's different than how you would do rice. Because what I found is like, once you do run quinoa over underwater, it's not as cloudy as it would be if you were doing rice, doing it with rice. So if you have, um, I have like, a, it's, oh my gosh, I forget what it's called. But um, I have this instrument where it has a lot of holes in it. And it's, it's not, uh, let me see. Not a strainer? It's a, it's a, it's a smaller than a strainer. It's like this. Oh yeah. Yeah, there you go. That's what I use for rice. <laughs> so now that that is toasting, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna add my liquid. I called it a sieve. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I should have. <laughs> so I was thinking of like a, a text question to ask everyone, but I didn't. I, I have forgotten it because of the, so that should have been like a fun fact. So I'm adding my liquid. And I'm gonna move this because sometimes I have a hard time with boiling things. And what you want to do is what is ready for um to be and it's started baking. So as it starts. I need to but as my starts boiling I will signal everybody <laughs> so how's everybody going have they have you gotten your quinoa in the in your pot getting some thumbs okay. up people okay. looking busy is it boiling Oh, that was like, oh, I see someone is using garlic. <laughs> <laughs> Diane couldn't, couldn't help said. herself. No garlic left behind. Right, I'm thinking like maybe, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe I need some more garlic. For vampire teeth. Mm -hmm. How appropriate this week. <laughs> I know, I know. So is anyone dressing up or going trick-or-treating for Halloween? Or taking anyone trick-or-treating? I know, okay. I got one hands up. <laughs> Jamie, what are you being for Halloween? It's actually pretty funny. Um, my daughter is going out and I'm gonna take her and um, I have an, a chef's outfit. And then on the corner, Ooh. there's an F and an E to get it. Iron yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Hey, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. If you're in Coos Bay, stop by the co-op. We're handing out candy. You know, we're going to be wearing costumes. It's going to be a really good time. I don't know what I want to... I was, why was I about to say, I don't know where I want to be when I grow up? <laughs> what? What you want to be when you grow up? That's okay. Right. Right. Oh, are. No. <laughs> <laughs> but what I... I wanted to be Kiss. I've also thought of being a nun before... I will give, I will share a secret with y'all, only with y'all, is that one year I was in elementary school and my grandmother dressed me up as Tina Turner. Nice. Fun fact. What happens at cooking, community cooking with the co-op stays at community cooking with the co-op. Yeah. Tell, so, tell me you wore a short skirt. I did and a wig. And a wig? Yeah. Wow. All right. We're going to so, get a picture of that. 
Yeah. My my quinoa is ready. Well, I just stirred, I just stirred it up. So that kind of stops the stops the boiling process when you stir. But as you see, like you see, it starts popping and it's going around. Cool. Then that's my signal that it is ready for me to reduce the heat. And I'm gonna reduce the heat, put the lid on, I'm gonna put it to a side, and I'm gonna set my timer for 20 minutes. So and reduce the heat. Reduce heat, put the timer on, put the lid on, and no peaking. <laughs> I know it's really hard, but no peaking. Okay. Um, I want to so, ring your quinoa. Hey, it's a fact. I mean, when something says let stand with wood lid on, I trust that. Okay. <laughs> Me too. Um, so what I'm gonna start doing is prepping my veggies for my curry. So the quinoa is over there doing this thing on the stove. It's becoming really delicious. Now I'm going to start looking at um, my mushrooms, my bell peppers, my poblano peppers, my onions, cilantro, and chickpeas. <laughs> I think so, Cheyenne uh, has a question, Jamar. Hi, Cheyenne. Hey, so uh, sorry to interrupt, but I'm, no, doing, I'm doing rice instead of quinoa. How mm -hmm. long for the main dish do you think? Like, should I go ahead and get the rice? I would go ahead and I would go ahead and get the rice cooking because the thing about like curry is that the longer it simmers, the the better it gets, and it's even going to be even better tomorrow. So yeah. I would go ahead and get the brown rice on because you're making brown rice, right? Um, yeah. I'm actually going to do a, a long grain white. Long grain white. So it takes a it takes about you know like there's a two to one um yeah. with that as well. Okay, so as you start cooking your rice. Go ahead and put your rice on, and then we'll start doing the doing our veggies. Okay. All right. Okay. So the first thing that is going in our pot, if you have attended community cooking with the co-op before, you know that mushrooms are the first thing that goes in the pot because they need to kind of reduce. So mushrooms hold in a lot of a lot of water, and so the goal here is to sweat the mushrooms. Mm. basically cool. so we're going to sweat the mushrooms but i have I, I definitely went overboard with mushrooms i definitely do not have five buttons there's about 10 and <laughs> so i am going to okay so let me get my pan hot i got my other pan my other pot going it's heating up a little bit and now with the mushrooms what i've done is slice them into even into even shapes and I have some more over to the side that we can kind of cut up and I can show you my process. So I always cut mushrooms in half. I always cut the mushroom in half and it looks like a, so you see this? Then yeah. what I do is I put it flat. I put it flat and it makes, I, and I just go whoop, whoop, whoop. And I'm making sure I'm doing even cuts. And then as it starts getting to the point where the knife works even with the knife, like it's able to sit. I flip it on the side and then I start over cutting the game. But no whoop. No, yeah. whoop, no whoop on the second half. <laughs> hey. <laughs> All right. Do you have oil in that pan? No, we're putting it in a dry pan because the mushrooms are already going to, re going to release much moisture. So once the mushrooms cook down a little bit more, then we'll start adding the olive oil and then we'll start um, prepping. So first, while we're going to add our mushrooms to our pan. What should people have their pan at? Medium? I have mine at a medium heat. Cool. And that's just rule of thumb. Whenever you are making mushrooms, doing cooking with mushrooms. I even like when I'm sauteing mushrooms, I always put them in first. Cool. I'll cut one more up. My pan is full of mushrooms, but it's okay. And and Jamar is cooking for the crew, so he might have more ingredients than y'all. <laughs> yes. Okay, so my mushroom is over here. Boom. And so next, we're going to start looking at our bell peppers 
and our onion. So I have, I'm gonna do half of an onion, but I want the mushrooms to cook down a little bit more before I start crowding my pan. And so while, while they're already simmering and you can tell that they're already cooking and make sure you're moving them around a little bit. We're gonna start with the onions. And so you should have a half of an onion left over and we're gonna do the same chop for the um, onion. I'm going to like savage mode with my with my um, onions and stuff. So those cooking along should just use the other half of the red onion. Yeah. All right. And it is going in my red stock bowl. So some of the things that I've learned not to put in my veggie stock are stems, like parsley stems and broccoli stems. Sometimes it makes it a little bitter. Mm. No. But the cool thing about your veggie stock is you get to make it your own, you know? Nice. I think I've made um veggie stock and I put it in I put it in the um fridge <laughs> and my my dad thought it was kombucha because it was <laughs> he was like <laughs> took a swig. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so I am cutting my onions. <laughs> Same technique. Nice. And remember to move your um move your mushrooms around in your pan. Don't burn your shrooms. So it's mushroom season. Does anybody here have a favorite mushroom? Oh, king, king bullet, porcini, and hedgehog. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Does anyone else have, have a favorite mushroom? Lion's mane, said Jamie with a Y. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. We have lion's mane here at the co op. Nice. I found a baby porcini button today, for the other day. Oh, really? Day, yeah. Now I wanted to bring an in extra cat just to make sure it was so small. Oh, yeah. Cat is, the, I, I call our deli manager, Cat, the mushroom whis whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> it's her jam. That between llamas and mushrooms, those are her jams. So. <laughs> As you'll see, the, your mushrooms that are sauteing, you'll see like the water being, the moisture being let out of them. Are y'all seeing that? I think so. See, they're not sticking, it's just we're sweating them. Cool. So the mushrooms are literally at the sauna and I feel like I need to just add some more mushrooms to it. Five days for the mushrooms. Yes. <laughs> Always. We're gonna get a little a cucumber, cucumber ice cream. Mm-hmm. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding our, um, as we start prepping our veggies, we're gonna add them one time, one thing at a time. So there's no rush on. There's no rushing. Our goal is to have everything finished at the same time. So right now, at my quinoa. It's at 11.44. So we have the, oh, I have my mushroom sweating. Now I'm going to start adding my olive oil, not my olive oil, but my onions. Oh. Just let them incorporate for a little bit. And then as they're going, I'm going to start with my bell pepper. Nice. So the bell pepper, I did a cup of bell peppers, but I'll show you how I chopped mine. Cool. So the goal when it comes to bell peppers and prepping bell peppers, I think it's really important just to cut the top off. Like, so you have it like this, right? Mm -hmm. Go in and pull out your seed of your bell pepper, which is going in my and then when it comes to the to the top, 
of your bell pepper. You want to use the whole bell pepper, so just go around it. And now you only have this, cool. and you're just putting the stem off to the side. If you put it in your um, if you if you decide you want it in your veggie stock, that works as well. So as my onions are starting to to incorporate with the mushrooms, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna drizzle just a little bit of um, olive oil, maybe a tablespoon. I'm not measuring because I can eyeball a tablespoon. <laughs> and I always go a little bit over a tablespoon. So about a tablespoon. Yeah, about around a tablespoon. Gotcha. Hello. So I have my, this is hanging out. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to start prepping my bell peppers. And so the cool thing about bell peppers is I always prep from the inside. I never prep with, with the skin side up. I always prep from the inside. And what I found is that it allows me to kind of like slice through, whether I'm using a dull knife or not, which I don't <laughs> think you should ever use a dull knife in the kitchen. <laughs> but, um, so I'll show you how easy it is for me when it comes to slicing a bell pepper. Nice. Okay, so. I'm doing strips because I'm dicing. So I'm going to go one. You see how it's breaking apart? Mm hmm. Two. And you'll hear the snap, right? But say, for instance, if I'm cutting from the skin side out, which is this side, you don't really, it, it, it just folds. So I am cutting from the inside and I'm being conscious of my fingers because I need those. Yes, we need those. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> So got those to the side and now I am moving around my onions and my, my bell peppers. So when it comes to dicing the bell, the dicing the bell peppers, I've already cut them into strips and I'm going to just put a couple together and just go. And I'm being I'm taking even strides when it comes to cutting. So that way they all kind of come out the same size. Nice. And if you do that, then you have a cup. <laughs> A bell pepper. So now I have a little bit over a cup of bell pepper. Okay. You still have that on medium? Yes, I still have it on medium. Cool. And if your pan is a little dry, just just pour in a little bit more, a um, little bit more olive oil. All righty. And so the next thing on our list is. Clavano peppers, which are totally optional, um, depending on one, if your guests that you're cooking for are not fans of heat, then you might want to kind of be um, acknowledge the fact that maybe I shouldn't add a whole bunch of clavanos and chili, <laughs> and chili peppers and things like that. You want them to have the best cooking experience. But for me, what I did was I took all the seeds out, and same thing like how I chop, how I chopped the bell peppers. I'll cut around the top, and then same thing. You peel it. You want to use the whole. You want to use the whole vegetable, you know. And then what I did was I cut down down the sides, and then I just pull all the seeds out. Now these are going in my veggie stock, by the way. <laughs> nice. And I'm cutting it just like how I did the um, bell peppers, skin side up. What not skin side up, flush side up, right. and take long strides. And what I'm doing is I want to make sure I have an even cut. And so I'm cutting even, 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 even. Okay. And the recipe calls for waffle blano. But I'm going to do maybe like, maybe I'll weigh it out. Because I'm going to do a little bit under like a fourth of a cup, I would say. Fourth of a cup of Flavano and maybe two tablespoons, depending on <laughs> depending on your spice level. But you want to go off of, off of your spice level because my spice, I like spice, but I also love flavor. So I don't really go for like the really extremely hot foods because I still want to make sure that I'm able to taste every seasoning and all of those things and have a well-balanced meal. Nice. So I'm gonna add a little bit more olive oil. And I got my Pugonos in there. 
So, so far we have mushrooms, we have our red onions, our bell peppers, our poblano peppers. Now we're gonna go and do just a little bit of cilantro. And yeah. how I have a whole thing of cilantro, but I'm not gonna use the entire bunch because I still wanna use it as garnish. Remember in the community cooking classes, we have learned to eat with our eyes. So we also, while we're building our recipes, we also want to make sure that we're thinking about plating as well. Okay. Making it pretty. Yes, and I have five minutes on my quinoa. And remember, we're not lifting the um, lifting the lid, okay? So no. <laughs> Don't touch. Don't touch it, okay? <laughs> so with my cilantro, I am doing like a rough chop. That use all the stems too. I do. I feel like you should you should use everything on the lunch. Yeah. Okay, give us a nice crunch. Absolutely. So I'm scraping the heat. And that was like an eyeball. So like say for instance, like a maybe a palm full of cilantro. And of course I'm at the stems as well. Because why not? <laughs> And so what I'm doing is when I'm adding new new ingredients, I am starting to start. Oh, it smells so good. It's looking good. It smells so good. Um, and so one of the things that I am going to do is I move everything from the center because the center is where my heat is, right? And so I am pulling everything to the side, and I'll show you how I have it in my pot. There we are. So you see how I have this middle, right? Oh, I, now I'm remembering the, the question. So I have chickpeas. What do we call, <laughs> what do we call the liquid that the chickpeas are in? Good question. Ah. Go ahead, Jamie. Afaba. Aquafaba. Okay. So if I, ever, if I ever had a stage name, my stage name would definitely be Aquafaba. <laughs> so, do you know that? Okay, so I have um I've rinsed my my um chickpeas. And you know the aquafaba, if you whip it up, it actually goes really good if you incorporate it into oh my gosh, brownies. Brownies, chocolate cakes. You can yes. It's an it's a good egg substitute. Absolutely. Egg white. So I'm adding my chickpeas over in there. Okay. Minus the aquafaba. Yes, minus the aquafaba. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm letting everything incorporate. And I gotta clean off my, my workstation. Joelle wanted to know how much uh, chickpeas you put in there. So I use one container of, so I love Jack um, quality chickpea. Oh my gosh, where's my butt? Oh, I'll get you. Um, <laughs> I saved everything. So my favorite chickpeas that are for me are um, the organic low, low um, sodium garbanzo beans. And the amount is, it's a 13.4 ounce container and so it's probably like a cup a little bit over a cup of chickpeas jamie did you see joshua's response he did put the cilantro in oh yeah i put this so in my pot i have the cilantro um the cilantro the bell peppers i have the red onions the poblano peppers i feel like i've forgotten something oh and the chickpeas Mm -hmm. And I haven't put the season in the yet. Uh, okay, my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> like, why would I come here without eating? Yeah. But it looks so good. Chickpeas look so happy. Okay, so now let's talk about seasoning. So I have 47, 
47 minutes on my chickpeas. Not my chickpeas, but on my chickpeas. Seconds. 47 seconds. Off. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> and the clock still says 5.30. Okay. <laughs> um, 33 seconds on my quinoa. Cool. How's everybody looking? And did you time? Is everybody on my timer as far as the quinoa? Where's their quinoa? Okay. Perfect. So let's start looking at the seasoning. So in the seasonings, we have curry, we have cumin, turmeric powder, and chili powder, black pepper, and a little bit of salt. Now, um, I always put mine, I always put my seasonings on a plate, especially if I am <laughs> trying to follow the rules and use this, use the amount that y'all have suggested. Okay, so. My, one second though, because my quinoa just timer just went off. And what right. I do is check that quinoa. I'm gonna cut the quinoa off, and then I have not lift up the um, lid. I'm gonna take it off the heat, and I'm gonna set my timer for ten more minutes because we want to let stand and kind of trap all the air in, and then we want to do our final lift. And how you know that the quinoa is is ready is because it kind of breaks off into this hard thing. And it has like a coil in it. So, okay, back to seasoning. You see how I can get off track. Um, back to the seasoning. So we have a half a teaspoon of curry, a half a teaspoon of cumin. And if you saw on the recipe, I gave you the bulk number of the type of curry that I was going to use because we have like a really hot one and it's really hot. <laughs> yes, it's really hot. So um, that's why I was really specific on the PLU numbers to kind of guide y'all through. Um, so we have a half a teaspoon of curry, a half a teaspoon of cumin, a fourth a teaspoon of turmeric, a fourth a teaspoon of ch chili powder, and a fourth a teaspoon of black pepper. Now I am using all of that because I feel like it gave the right, um, the right mix of flavors. But I'm not adding salt just yet because I feel like everyone should taste their salt, to, should taste their, um, their ingredients before adding the salt. Okay, so I'm going to start adding my seasonings. Add your seasonings. Oh. <laughs> this is like what I needed. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good, Jamar. Mm. Okay. And so now I'm going to add my pumpkin puree over it. Does everyone have a can opener in their <laughs> in their kitchen? I hope so. Okay. Um, I'm going to pour my pumpkin puree, and I have a spoon because I want to make sure I get everything. Cheyenne, you good? I saw you got kicked out for a moment. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> I was trying to look at the ingredient list and I got confused with what app I was using. Anyway, I'm back. <laughs> have we added the seasonings yet? Yeah. yeah, he added the seasonings and now he's adding uh, the puree. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to add, add a little bit more seasonings because I forgot to double my um, batch hmm. of seasonings because I'm cooking for two. Well, I've doubled the recipe, so I'm cooking for extras. And so I want to make sure that my spice is just right. And so what you'll see is that the, um, the pumpkin puree almost turns into like a paste almost, and it sticks to the, um, it sticks to the chickpeas. And what we want to do is kind of like even that out by adding some liquid into it. So if you have a table, if you have some veggie stock left over, you want to go ahead and add just a little bit of that just so the, um, and start with like adding it so it gets to the perfect consistency for you. 
what if we don't have veggie stock? Should we use water or? Um, you can use water, but if you got a box of um, a box of veggie stock, you should have a lot more left over. Oh, cool. So a veggie, a box, a container of veggie stock, thirty two ounces, has four cups. So you should have some left over because you only use um, you only should have used two cups. Cool. And I haven't added any salt just yet. I'm going to sprinkle some over it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to reduce my heat. So my quinoa is at five minutes. And what I'm going to do is I've been cooking up on high. I just wanted to just hang out for a little bit. And then what we want to do is to, right now should be the time for you to taste it and then start adding a little bit of salt up to your comfortable taste level. Anybody have any questions at this point? Feel free to unmute or throw them in chat. this right here. I got to clean up my mess because once I finish, I want to start eating, you know? How much of the veggie stock are we doing? So what you want to start out with just, um, I would say just start out with the tablespoon. You're trying to get it to the to a comfortable consistency for you. Okay. Um, and so if I were you, I would just start little and then just start adding. I don't want to say like add a cup because depending on how much, if everybody stayed true to the recipe, what you're just trying to do is let it get to a velvety texture. Okay. And Jamar, Joel um, had asked, oh, wait, I forgot now. What does the thinner texture look like? So the thinner texture, <laughs> if you add too much stock in there, is going to be like the consistency of soup. Now, what you want to do is just start out with a little bit, and I'll show you how mine looks. Like mine still. And so I started, I, I would say like what the liquid that I did add to it would have been like maybe two tablespoons. Kind of maybe peanut buttery. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice and creamy. Cool. Good question. Okay, I think I'm gonna add a salt. I keep looking so the clock on the wall <laughs> is <laughs> still five thirty. Over there. Yeah, it's still five thirty. <laughs> Right. <laughs> mm, 624. 24. Mm. How is it? Oh, it's good. <laughs> Just what I needed. <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit more salt because I'm doing this because I followed the recipe that I was giving y'all, but I was the one who doubled the recipe without <laughs> adding all the extra ingredients. So. Oh, there's a, add a little bit more cumin. Okay, so confession time. <laughs> What's that? I definitely added two cups of veggie broth already. So I think, I think it works, but. <laughs> well, here's, here's, the, here's the thing that you can do. Here's, so you added two cups of veggie broth. Okay. What you want to do is cut, cut it up on a high heat. Cut your pot up on high heat. And what you're going to do is just reduce it. Okay. That's it. So, cool thing about when you're cooking is that you troubleshoot. I mean, I have added, like, why did I just do that? Once you've learned how to reduce, it's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I would cut it up on high heat. 
and I shouldn't say cut it up, but turn it up. That's the Southern in me. It's like, cut that <laughs> off, <laughs> cut that down, <laughs> cut it up. If you turn it up on a high heat and let it reduce, basically, you know, um, it will it will pan out right. Cool. So it, it's, you, you can save it. You got this, Cheyenne. <laughs> and so my quinoa, so Cheyenne, how is your rice looking? Um, it looks good. I sauteed some onions and garlic. So it's got a nice color. Wow. Um, well, it's the cool thing about what you're seeing is that you can make any recipe your own. Um, and anything that like happens in the kitchen as far as like, okay, I'm not gonna steal my group, not gonna steal my thunder. We're still gonna make some delicious food. Definitely. I'm also the type of person that like I'll eat it even if I burned it or whatever. <laughs> I put all this effort into it, I'm still gonna eat it. So I'm that person as well. <laughs> Um, Jamar, Peggy has a question. Hi, Peggy. She asks, um, can can it still be reduced uh, after adding the pumpkin? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because what you want to do, like, say, for instance, if you're reducing when you've already added the pumpkin and it's to the right consistency, I would just turn it down so that way it, it turns into a low simmer. Cool. Turns into a low simmer. Reducing is reducing on a high heat. So you're starting out with this big, this, this large amount of something, and then you're reducing it down to a smaller portion. Now, when it comes to, to simmering, you just want to kind of like keep, take it on down to a low heat and just simmer, so that way it gets even better. And that gives it time. That gives it more time for the seasonings to incorporate. Awesome. And Peggy said pumpkin's a new ingredient for her. Thanks. Hey, you're welcome. So my timer has went off. For my quinoa. Oh. <laughs> quinoa is like the gift that keeps on giving because it's like on my worst day, I can never mess up quinoa. I hope. I, I may need to knock on some wood. So. That means quinoa. I could probably cook it. Actually, I can. I can I'm telling you. <laughs> so, quinoa, right? Yeah. We're gonna, now we're gonna fold it. Because remember we had like the onions at the bottom, we cooked with veggie stock. And I don't know if you've been seeing how much um, flavor your quinoa has when you cook with veggie stock. So, gonna fold it. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. It's just, we're just folding it. We're being gentle with it. Yes, thanks Stacy. go eat and please send us that picture. Appreciate yeah. it. Perfect, 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 perfect. And it's light and it's fluffy. You see, I did not lift up the, take the lid off. The patience paid off. Okay. So now let's talk about plating, right? So I'm gonna move my, okay. <laughs> my, Got too much going on. <laughs> I'm gonna move my quinoa over to the side. That's perfect. And quinoa is so good, especially when you've chilled it um, and adding it to salads and things like that. You can always keep using it. Yeah. So I'm gonna start with my quinoa when it comes to plating. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna start in the middle. Cheyenne, Linda says, yum, rice. <laughs> I do love rice. That is my, um, but quinoa is my, my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, quinoa is so good for you. I just can't eat it personally. I totally would, but. And you know what I've, what I've also um, started venturing into is um, brown jasmine rice. Because mm. I always go for like the basmati and I like to keep the white jasmine rice, my, 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 you know, my buddy. But what I found also is that, okay, I can definitely 
I can definitely do um, brown jazz and rice. Nice. And it makes me happy as well. So, so far I have added my quinoa to the plate, to my bowl. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and just add my curry to the side. Nice. And Bird added that uh, millet is a great alternative to quinoa as well. Mm. Bird, you're full of like, I love this. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, so I have, I have my, and I'm gonna make sure I'm cleaning my bowl. Looks like I need a little bit more over here, of course. <laughs> The art of plating. I tried to go for like a yin and yang sign when I was plating, but <laughs> didn't work out. <laughs> it's close. <laughs> it is, right? It is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> so I have some of my cilantro. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this. I'm not going to use the stem so much, but I'm cutting it right up to like the flower. I am being a little picky on which one I would, you know. I guess I'll use another one. Yes, and don't forget to send us uh, pictures, y'all. Um, you can email, you guys all have my email in the um, Zoom email confirmation. If you could send me pictures of your meals, I'd appreciate it. Nice work, Jamie. Look at Jamie's. Oh, yes. Nice. nice. That's beautiful. Okay, this is where I get really jealous. Delicious. <laughs> um, while everyone's still here, uh, I just want to let you know that um, I've put some links in the chat. Uh, if you have a Coos Bay library card or um, a, a library card with Coastline, you can access the A to Z world food. Um, it has recipes from around the world. So like if you're like, hey, I want to cook something Russian, you can go to the Russian page and find some nice uh, ingredients. Um, also, if you want some more Jamar, there are so many past episodes of community cooking uh, with the co-op. Uh, I've included the link, or the, the, a link to the playlist and you can, Watch more Jamar cook. Over a year's worth. Over a year. I know. That's crazy. Isn't it? Over a year's worth. That is so amazing. So amazing. Thanks so to you guys. Okay. It wouldn't be community cooking with the co-op if y'all did not show up. Definitely. <laughs> and I will say, like, the technical problems today, that, that was a Cadillac problem. Like, Paul, do you know? <laughs> If only you knew what it was like when we were like, okay, we're going to do this thing. Um, we got a laptop. We have a webcam. Let's go. <laughs> you know? Randomly but, borrowing little pieces of equipment from different right, people in the community. Right. <laughs> and it's like we had, um, we invested in these microphones one time. Now we can laugh about it. But we, and we were like trying everything to make sure like these microphones work because we were like, we have to, we have to increase the sound. You know, how can we do the sound quality? The worst earbuds ever. <laughs> well, they lasted. We we got a chance to use them a whole cooking class. We got and lucky. Actually, they lasted one hour. Right when everybody, like, left, Paul was, like, talking to me, and I wasn't hearing a thing. <laughs> so lucky. So, yeah, 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 but this is... Oh, like thanks, Jamie. Jamie said it's real yummy. It was great seeing y'all again. You too, Jamie. Thanks Absolutely. for coming back. Great seeing you. Thank you. you. Nice to see you all. Thanks so, so much. Cheyenne, how is, do you have it on a high heat and do, are you seeing that it's reducing? Yeah, I think it's, um, I think it's good. We're uh, like, it's not, you know. Oh yeah. It seems good Thanks, to Bert. me <laughs> and it smells so good. So I'm gonna go eat, but thank you guys. Awesome, thanks Cheyenne. Thank
Has, has anybody <laughs> not finished us. that that we need to help finish this uh, curry meal? Everybody's good. Good seeing you, Cheryl. We have a member that just came in, so you know I have to feed the members. Nice. Do you imagine you just walk in the club, you get a cup of pumpkin curry? Oh, that'd be amazing. That's awesome. I want to come every day. <laughs> awesome. Take care, Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. Mark or John, do you guys have any questions? Feel free to unmute if you have any questions. Cool. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. Oh, Cheryl, if you, if you take the pictures, um, I, I can walk you through emailing them to me. <laughs> Cool. Thanks again, Jamar and Alan. Yeah. Hey, thank y'all. Thanks. thanks for playing electrician, Alan. Yeah, thanks for thanks for bearing with us on that. I, oh, yeah. I, figured, I figured out what's going on. So we'll we'll get everything back running for next time. Right. <laughs> oh, there let's see it, Cheryl. Nice. Ooh. Oh, that looks great. Oh yeah, good job. Oh, nice. Thank you. Oh. Nice work. And Cheryl, you you were able to use pumpkin. <laughs> yes, yes, I was, and I I mostly just left out the peppers. Mm -hmm. uh, I splurged with a little bit of the peppers in the curry, but and I have to admit, I for I like totally spaced using the broth for my quinoa. So when you said something about the broth, I was like, oh shoot, I forgot <laughs> to use broth. So unfortunate. But maybe next time. Hey. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Cheryl. And um, Jamar, Mark said um, he came in late and he was asking, do you cook half the onion in oil and then add the quinoa and stock and cook? Yes. Yeah. So with the quinoa, you want to start with your base, of course, a little olive oil, maybe a tablespoon. Put the onions in, let the onions turn translucent. And then you want to start adding your quinoa over so that way you can toast your quinoa and then the veggie stock. Does that make sense, Mark? And if you have any questions about the recipe, you can always come into the co-op and just ask for me. And we can sit and, you know, kind of like compare notes as far as, um, as, far as, as, far as the recipe that you took down. Yeah. All right. Well, if everybody's all set, I think we're going to cut out so uh, the co-op right. can eat and I can go eat my dinner and be jealous of pumpkin curry. <laughs> hey, thank y'all so much. Thank yeah, you. thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Mark.